Hi everyone, this is Lee here from ABC of Anesthesia, and today I'm going to go through IV cannulation techniques in darker skinned people. Now, this is one of the most common things I get asked, and for good reason. In dark skinned people, you don't get the visual cues that you might for being able to differentiate a vein from other structures. So I'm going to go through all the techniques for successful IV cannulation, but also I'm going to pay particular attention to the things that I think about when I'm doing a cannulation on a darker skinned person. So let's get started. So obviously cannulation in a dark skinned person is a little bit different. You don't get a lot of the visual cues that you might get on a lighter skinned person. For example, every time you see a vein on a light skinned person, you do get the sense of a bluish tinge there. So really that's probably the main difference with dark skinned people. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a demonstration on my mate here. Um, thanks very much for your help. And I'm going to go through all the steps and principles that I'd use for a dark skinned patient to make sure that your cannula is successful. So to start off, make sure you get consent from your patient, make sure you clarify the indication and use your really rigorous aseptic non-touch technique. And I've gone through that in other, other videos. Next thing is making sure that you've got the ergonomics right and you position your patient well. So that means that making sure that they're sitting comfortably or lying comfortably and that I've got the right ergonomics for the way I'm going to insert this cannula as well. Now, in terms of the setup, I make sure that I've got a sharp spin handy, I've got gloves, and notice that this time I'm putting a towel underneath my patient's arm. That's because blueies, which we traditionally use, which are really great for absorbing and keeping the area waterproof, they're really bad for the environment and they can stay in landfill for over 100 years. So that's why I'm put using a towel that's easily washable as well. So I'm going to get set up, put on some gloves. Next thing I do, I put on the tourniquet and I'm going to use all my usual methods for making sure that this vein is large. So I'm just putting on this tourniquet, making sure that it's above venous pressure, but not above arterial pressure. And if you're not sure, you can always check that your patient still has a good pulse and you'll almost see immediately that the veins are enlarging. Now at this point, I usually go and do my setup because then that it'll take a bit of time to make sure that the venous pressure increases. So now that I've got my setup already, I'm gonna do all the usual things to make sure that this vein or the veins on the arm stand out as much as possible. Because again, I don't get a lot of the visual cues in a darker skinned person. So that means that making sure that the tourniquet is appropriate, um, you can get a bit of muscle activity going. So I'll get my patient to uh, make a fist opening and closing their hand. And that just increases the metabolism, drawing in more blood to that area and increasing venous pressure as well. So I might also use gravity, for example, making sure that the arm is below. As soon as I put the arm above, you might notice that the veins don't stand out as much. But if they're low down here, you get this hydrostatic pressure gradient that increases the pressure in these lower veins. You can also use tapping. For example, just tapping away like that increases the vasoactive mediators and that dilates up your vein as well. So you can see that this vein is standing out quite prominently. Now my mate here, he has a lot of options. He has a lot of veins. I can see that there's a one over there. There's quite a few on the forearm. There's quite a few on the hand. So I'd say the next most important thing with dark skin people is get, getting really used to the feel of a vein. So making sure that you practice this constantly, whether it's on yourself or your mates, you understand the feel of a vein, that it's bouncy, it's not pulsatile, and it's not firm. The usual things that you'll mistake a vein for are an artery or a tendon. Now, if you want to feel what a tendon is like, just go on the medial side of the antecubital fossa, and there's a spot here where there's a bicep tendon. And you can even get your, you know, while you're practicing, get them to flex, and you'll notice a very firm tendon right at that spot there. Now you can also practice checking for an artery. For example, if I was to just straighten my friend's elbow here and just press down on the medial side near that tendon, you'll feel something pulsatile. So if you get a sense of knowing what tendons and arteries are, that's really the major mistake that a lot of people will make, especially if you don't have a lot of the visual cues. Now, the rest of the technique, once I've identified a vein, the rest of the technique is just the same. You probably have seen me perform this technique in so many of my other videos, but we're just going to do it now. Also, please check out my IV cannulation mastery course. Now, in this course, I really want to give you all the knowledge and experience that I have over the last 20 or so years of my practice, and I want to put it in this course so you can learn from it as well. So there's probably about over two hours of material, and I really hope that it's useful for you. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is demonstrate on a vein that's a little bit less hard to see because of the darkness of a skin. So this vein's pretty obviously a vein, and the ones on the hand are pretty obvious. So what's going to be different is this area here. In this area, you might notice that there's a couple of tendons, and you can also get an aberrant radial artery, so you've got to be really careful in this region. So I'm making sure that it's bouncy and it's not pulsatile. 
I then do my usual st sterile prep with a Chlorhex alcohol solution. Now I've got my IV bung. What I often do is preload that and make sure it's flushed and leave it in a micro sterile environment. Now this is a safety cannula. It's got a little bit of a retractable needle, which is really good for safety, um, but it's not one of the common ones that I use. Now all the same techniques. I'm stretching the skin and that's to make sure that, you know, I try to stop the vein from rolling, but also keep the skin firm. My thumb is out of the way. That means I can get a nice low angle. My hand grip is like this, thumb and middle finger. It's definitely not thumb and pointer finger. That way I can see blood in this chamber. Next thing I go, it's a really superficial vein. It's probably got a bit of a larger wall. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go at a nice low angle, go nice and slowly. I'm gonna rotate that just so you can see, hopefully. And just going in, waiting for the flashback of blood. And you can see the flashback in the chamber, leveling out. And I need, I know I need to just insert the needle and cannula another maybe few millimeters. So I'm just gonna go in maybe four millimeters, five millimeters, and then thread the cannula. So. So what's happened there with this cannula? So this is a really great example of when you're not that familiar with the equipment, I've actually pressed that button, which has retracted the needle a little bit early. It's still fine because my cannula is in the vein, but that's just meant that I've had a bit of a blood spillage and that's not a problem. This happens sometimes. I'm actually glad it happened in this video to show that it's not a big deal. Now I'm going to take this tourniquet off while I'm keeping pressure here. So that blood just flowed back and you saw that I was still able to thread the cannula, even though it was not that firm because I was already inside the vein because I'd advanced the appropriate distance. Now, I've got a bit of a problem here. I've still got an uncapped cannula. So because I've got this already and preloaded, no more blood's flowing back. And I'm just gonna screw that on there and then confirm that it's flushing well. And sometimes you can do a pulse test, making sure that you've got a bit of a pulse distally, which I do. And you can ask your patient, do you feel that flowing up your vein? Good, so that's all, that's pretty well confirmed in the vein. Now, the next thing I do, because my gloves have blood on them, I'm just gonna take that off now. I'll put on a set of clean gloves. This way I can clean the area and then dress it appropriately. And there we have it, a successful cannulation. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you learned something about the differences in, and the things you have to watch out for in a dark skin patient, and also what to do if something goes wrong, that you still have all your principles right, that you can still thread your cannula in and just keep everything safe. Don't panic and just sort the problem out in a measured way. So I hope that was useful. Please share with anyone who might be interested in this video and I'll see you again next time. Now what's new with ABCs of Anesthesia is that we're forming a whole bunch of very comprehensive courses for every stage of your anesthetic journey from medical student to procedural skills, from foundations in anesthesia as well as really important exam lectures and courses and clinical anesthesia courses as well. Thank you.